Hello, hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is Linda and Mr. Carl is behind the controls here at the Colorworks Design House. It is Friday, July 3rd. We are so happy that you're joining us here for the holiday weekend. Um, today we're going to be talking about pressing tips and tricks, but guess what today is? Today is... That's right, it's Fab Friday, and I am so happy you're joining us. Please go ahead and give us a comment there. Let us know that you're joining us and that things are streaming correctly. Uh, please also like and share this video with your friends, uh, family, uh, pets, uh, quilting buddies. Uh, the more the merrier here over at the Colorworks Party. We love having everybody join us. Also be sure to uh, subscribe to our Colorworks YouTube channel so you always get notifications of when we put up tips tutorials and new videos because we're going to be doing that quite a lot. So this has been quite a week here in the Colorworks Design House. Um, the first thing that we want to do is make sure you comment, let us know everything is streaming and, and say hello to us and make sure everything is going great, you can see us. We're going to check in with the Cactus Cam. And there it is, the Cactus Cam looking very patriotic today. Golfers are out on the golf course mm -hmm. and we have the flags flying for 4th of July weekend. Um, and it is a beautiful day here in Palm Desert. I believe we're headed up to 111, if you can believe it. Um, but we're staying inside and cool and comfy with our air conditioning going. So hello, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this holiday weekend. Happy early 4th of July to everybody. Um, I'm looking at the comments here. I can see we've got lots of people joining us. Um, from all over the place. A lot, a lot of people from our Pinehurst, our older residents in Pinehurst. Hello, everybody in Pinehurst. We really miss you guys, and um, we're so happy that you're finding us here on the Colorworks Facebook page to join us here. So, like I said, today we're going to be talking about pressing tips and tricks, but I want to go through some news that we had this week as well. Um, we'll start the show off first by giving away our $10 um, Colorworks gift card first. Um, because, you know, every week we do a, uh, like a random drawing for a $10 Colorworks gift card based on a question that we ask at the end of the program. So last week's question was, what was your favorite applique stitch? And the winner of our $10 gift card in a random thingamajig kind of way is... Janine, thank you, and well, and congratulations. So we're gonna get in touch with you, Janine, about how to get you that $10 Colorworks gift card. And everybody else, stay tuned to the end of the program because we're gonna be asking the question of the week there. All you need to do to enter into the drawing is simply answer the question at the end of the program in the comment section, and then we put all everybody's names in a random thingamajog and pick a winner. So we had some news here this weekend. Um, so let's see, you might have seen this flash up in your Instagram. This is the Quilted Fab book. I actually found this in the depths of our sewing closet. Don't ask me for a print of this. It is out of print, but I did want to say that this was a book that we did with Leisure Arts way back in 2005. Um, it was because we put out our fabric line with P&B Textiles, the good people over at P&B, uh, when Erwin Baer was still around and in charge of the company. and. Um, this was the book that we put out, but we also put out another book, which we do have in stock. So I'm saying if you like this book, which I can't sell you because we don't have any more copies, I have this book, which is the Fab Five book from the Linderella's era. And guess how much it is? It's five bucks in our color workshop. So all the Linderella patterns are still there of what we still have in stock, as well as this book. Um, and they are all at a bargain price of $5. So if you're looking to pick this up, we still have copies of the Fab Five book for you to pick up for friends, family, and things of that nature. Um, everybody is checking in here. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. Julie, good morning. Hello and happy 4th, everybody. I'm going to move along swiftly because we have a big program here. So you might have noticed the quilt. I'm going to slide to this side. The quilt on this side of me, this is the disco quilt. So this has uh, been over having an extended vacation in France, of all places, for the last six months because it is in this issue of Simply Modern Magazine. So I'm trying to still acclimate myself to the camera there. But so uh, if you have wanted to make this quilt, it's in this issue of Simply Modern, which is on newsstands right now. This is a beautiful magazine filled with beautiful pictures, in case you don't know it. There it is. 
Oh, the disco quilt in Simply Modern Magazine. Carl's brought it up on the monitor there for you. And it is in the magazine there. And if you don't know Simply Modern, they are the same publishers that do Quilt Mania, which is another beautiful magazine. This is their more modern kind of look at the magazine. So our disco quilt is in this issue with the parrots on it of Simply Modern. So I just wanted to let you all know that in case you get Simply Modern at your house or in case um, you want to pick that up on newsstands because maybe you've wanted to make the disco quilt. I'm going to see where we're going next. The Splendor Quilt Along has started. That started on Wednesday, July 1st. There's still time to jump in if you want to jump in on it. Um, we Basically, uh, the, the week's assignment, this week one, was all about gathering your pattern, getting your materials together. We're making the Splendor Quilt. As you can see, there's the schedule for you. If you don't know about our Colorworks Quilt Along page on Facebook, go ahead and just request to join. Again, it's called Colorworks Quilt Alongs, and everybody uh, is invited to join us there where you can post progress pictures, ask questions, etc. And if you don't want to uh, join Facebook, that's fine too. We always leave all our blog posts up on our website. Um, Carl's been busy cutting little Splendor flowers. This is actually the off cut. Um, so I'm thinking of doing something reverse applique, but we've been doing these in our Cricut, um, is it Cricut? Silhouette? Did I get that right, Carl? Silhouette um, Cameo. Oh, a Silhouette Cameo. Sorry, I confused both companies. There's a Cricut and then there's a Cameo Silhouette. And he's been making little Splendor flowers. So this little outline yields these little flowers and I don't have to cut them out because the Cricut, is it? No, the Cameo, sorry, the Cameo Silhouette um, does it for me. And so if you have um, one of those machines at home, you can certainly do that with your applique fabrics. It does cut fabric, and that's the amazing thing about it. Um, so where are we going next? Oh, this is super exciting before we get to the pressing demo. Um, we have been, in case you've noticed, everybody's been upping their video game and their um, kind of online presence with videos and video tutorials and all this other stuff. And so we thought, okay, great, we're going to jump into the game. So we've been doing our Facebook Lives here, which we do every Friday. And we also wanted to do something a little special to start each one of our video tutorials. And so we have had our logo animated. And um, so what we did is we worked with a graphic artist um, in Italy, of all places. You kind of, not that we chose him in Italy, it's just that you go to a place and you, you actually get assigned a graphic artist to help you. And um, so Alessandro was his name, and Alessandro helped us animate our Colorworks logo. So we're going to reveal it to you today. I think Carl and I are probably more excited about this than maybe you guys will, but we think it's pretty nifty. So roll it, Carl. I, I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I let us know what you think in the comments, but I thought... Oh, wow, that's pretty neat, you know, because he took our static logo and he animated it. Should we, can we look at it again? You want to look at it again? Whoa! So, yes, that's, I think Carl and I are probably more excited coming from TV and film. Um, that was our previous careers before we did this for a living. And so um, we were pretty excited to get that from Alessandro. And if there's anybody out there who has a company or in the uh, quilting industry, we would like a reference on how we got that done and who we worked with. Um, we will um, we'll happily uh, send that over to you. Just email us at colorworks at yahoo.com or through our website. And I will be happy to email you our, uh, the reference to Alessandro to help you animate your logo if you're interested. Okay, how's everybody doing out there? I see we've got everybody checking in. I'm looking over at the monitor. Ah, everybody likes the animated logo. Thank you so much. We, we actually love it too. So we think it's pretty cool. So we're gonna move on to the demo really quickly. I'm gonna go over to the overhead now and talk about Pressing tips and tricks when Carl's ready. There we go. I'm moving myself uh, throughout the room here so I don't trip over cords. And we are here at the pressing table. I do need to see what I'm doing when Carl turns the monitor so I don't come out of the camera focus. There we go. I can see that my hands are here. It's like magic. So let's talk about pressing tips and tricks. 
this is really I'm gonna go through some just tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the year about uh, not the year but the years of quilting that I um, let me turn this guy on uh, that I've picked up from people. This is really for patchwork piecing. So when you're trying to do blocks and they have to come out to a certain size, um, it's really what I'm going to share with you today is really for patchwork piecing, not necessarily appliqueing or um, other just regular pressing. So let's talk about irons. I've got three irons lined up here. And um, I think you all are familiar with this one. This is the Alicio. And everybody knows this is one of my favorite irons. I go through these probably one a year just because of how much sewing we do. This is the one that that automatically lifts itself up from the pressing table. So when you put it down, it goes psh, like that, and psh, up it goes, and um, and it takes its um, it take so you can leave it down on the pressing table like that, and it will just lift itself up automatically, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's so that reduces shoulder strain basically on you. Um, what I like about this blue version, and I only use the blue version by the way, is because the sole plate is a metal sole plate. That's very important to me as an applicator because I want to make sure that I can clean this sole plate um, because I get it gunked up with lots of fusible stuff. So the other sole plates for Alicio don't necessarily have a metal sole, um, a, a metal sole plate. They are either Teflon coated and that makes it very hard when they get gunked up. So I like the cheaper version, if you will, of the Alicio here. So that's the first thing. This iron here is um, amazingly sturdy and very cheap. And I found it in my mother's cupboard after she passed about four years ago. It's called the Black & Decker, I love this name, Surge Express. Surge Express. This is a $10 iron and I will never ever throw it away until it actually stops working. Again, it has a really gunked up metal sole plate here. It's very old, I think my mother paid like 10 bucks for it. I use this iron to do all my starching with before I cut my fabrics. This is, um, I leave it on dry. I don't ever put any water in it for steaming. It stays just like it is, but what's great about this iron, and I would encourage you to go out and get yourself a 10, 15, $20 iron. I don't even know how much they cost these days, just for the purpose of starching your fabrics. Getting a really hot, cheap iron like this, um, works and I'm going to show you why it works. It's just a beautiful thing. Um, so that's that. This is the newest addition to in the Colorworks Design House, which is this little Alicio travel iron and it's called a project iron. It gets steamy. I'm going to get some there. Did you hear that steam? And it gets super hot. So I like this because uh, there's a lot of times where I don't want to heave around a big iron or Carl might be working downstairs. So he uses this one and um, so, and it comes with this little resting plate on it, which is also a storage plate. When you're done, you kind of stick it in there and put it to bed. But this also rests up here. Now this one, like its bigger brother, this one does not go psh up automatically. It just stays on its little resting plate. So we're gonna push that over there and I'm gonna show you things. So you might've noticed this lovely green ironing board. We just recovered this in this beautiful tulip pink banana fabric. Um, a lot of people want to know what what is this? I like to use more of a bigger ironing board than the regular ironing board. This is an IKEA tabletop. Um, it's a 34 inch, maybe 35 inch by 40 inch tabletop where you screw the legs in, and we've just covered it with batting and um, some canvas duck cloth. Also, then put some fabulous fabric on it just to make it happy in the sewing room. I'm going to show you a picture if Carl can do that right there. So that's what it stays on. This is the where I usually do all my ironing. And so it's on one of those Calax units, um, which are the bookcase units at Ikea. And then this, this tabletop, which is really like a desktop, you know, Ikea, you can buy the singular desk and then you screw the table legs in. Um, so if you get one of those just little tabletops, and I think they're about 10, $15, you can just cover it in two layers of batting, a layer of duck cloth, and then a layer of fabric. And you uh, staple gun it all to the back. And then you just simply change the, the fabric on top as it gets you know, stained or worn out or things like that. So that's what this is. It's just simply off its um, calyx. Now I do want to show you this too. This is iron off. Let me get this up to the camera. 
iron off cleaner. This is my favorite cleaner for the iron. This is why I don't like Teflon sole plates because I use this iron off cleaner. It's a gel or like a, um, you know, a kind of like a, a paste and you put it on a rag and it's very stinky. So if you are at all sensitive to smells, make sure you open the window before you use it. This is at all your local shops. I prefer this much better than uh, the uh, uh, sole plate sheets that they sell that are, you know, like dryer sheets or anything like that. This really, really, really cleans your iron well. It's called Iron Off Cleaner by Dritz. It's great. Um, and you should get yourself some and then just get a little test, you know, like a rag that you can use off to the side for all your irons. So that's what I use to clean all my, my plates with. So let's talk about pressing. So one of the things that I do all the time is before I cut fabrics, this is not necessarily for applique again, this is just for um, when I'm going to do a piece of patchwork piecing, like making a block, I starch all my fabrics with this. So some people say this brings out silverfish. Well, I don't normally, you know, um, get silverfish, but if you, if you don't wash your quilts after you're done with them, you might get some silverfish from using the faultless starch. But I put this on before I cut the fabric. So I will starch up a yard or half a yard of fabric at a time um, with this. And I prefer the gold label there, which is um, 99 cents more than the other label. And you get this at Walmart by the can. And I, if you notice, I'm spraying on the wrong side of the fabric. So I learned this from a trick from Harriet Hargrave, who is a, one of the first quilters in the business. She's kind of the pioneer of quilting back in the 70s. And she taught me at a class that you spray on the wrong side. And if you noticed, I just turned it over to the right side and then you press. And reason why is if you spray on this side first, all you're gonna do is burn off that starch. So that's why you spray on the wrong side and then turn it over to the right side because what that's doing is that's forcing the starchy liquid to come up through the fibers of the fabric and actually stay in your fabric and not get burnt off by your iron. Now, again, I would recommend when you do this, I use my little Black & Decker Surge Express that I got from my mom because it's super dry, it's super hot, and it makes this process go a lot faster. If you use steam, which I'm doing right now, this, this, this little iron, even though it gets super hot, has a little steam in it, it still retains some of the moisture and you're not going to get that stiff, stiff, stiff stuff until uh, feeling until you actually let this totally dry out with by using a hot, dry, cheap iron. It really, really helps. And I also want to encourage you to put your comments in here in the comment section. If you see something that you want to add to the conversation, please be my guest. I am always looking for tips. So there that is now ready for cutting. And so I would only use this before I cut and there's a reason being is that before you cut you want to starch because when you starch one it gives the fabric body it makes it easier to work with when you're um, sewing and and stitching and then doing other pressing when you're making the block the other thing is starch does slightly shrink your fabric so you really don't want to starch while you're making a block because every time you starch you're going to be shrinking your fabric ever so slightly. And so that's one of the reasons why when you get to the end of making the block and you go, oh, wait a minute, this block was supposed to come out to be nine and a half by nine and a half. It's now nine and, and three eighths by nine and three eighths. What happened? I was perfect piecing. Well, if you're using starch every time you press, you're shrinking ever so slightly. So you don't want to do that. So use this only before you cut. Now, I also have, there's my huge jug of Mary, Mary Ellen's Best Press. I love Mary Ellen's Best Press. I use this though to finish my block or to finish a piece or to finish an applique block. And, you know, and I keep it in one of these little sprayers like this. So I get the big jug and then I put it in here. So I don't starch though at every step. So once I've pre-starched with the, with the faultless, right? Once I've pre-starched, I then cut, I piece. I try not to iron uh, or press through every step if I can't. Sometimes I finger press while making a block because the, that helps also make a better block and keep your size at, the, at where it's supposed to do when it finishes. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions as we go through this. 
So another thing I want to share with you, of course, we've all heard the thing about press, don't iron. This is ironing. This is pressing, right? Well, let's be frank about it. Sometimes you do have to just iron. I think it's okay. You do what works for you. So one of the things that I learned also was setting your seam. So what does that mean? Setting your seam means that once you've stitched two, two pieces together, whether it's a strip, a half square triangle, before you press to the dark side or to the darker fabric, what you're going to want to do is set the seam. And that means you're simply going to glide the, the iron over the stitching of the seam and you kind of squeeze that what that does is it squeezes and presses and flattens the thread and the seam together so that when you then go to press this to the dark side and if you notice this strip I'm pressing from the right side that's because when you have a strip piece you do want to press you want to bring it over it's a little hot bring it over finger press like so as much you can and instead of pressing like this, right, if you press like this, you're going to distort your nice straight seam. If you press from this side and run the iron up the seam, you don't distort the seam. It creates a nice flat seam. And if you set the seam, which means pressing like this before you do this, you get a nice, nice flatter seam. So I hope that makes sense there. Always press the dark side and also um, sometimes you have to be, if you're not pressing to the dark side, just make sure that you uh, don't see shadows here. Sometimes you'll see the seam shadow on this side and um, that's kind of hard to avoid, but if you can press to the dark side or the darker fabric, that helps. If you're using um, shapes that are cut on the bias, for instance, like a triangle, instead of pressing like this, which will distort the shape, you want to press with the the point of the iron going up the bias at a 45 degree angle like that and the other tip is always let your pieces cool especially when you're working with bias pieces let them cool before you actually take them and move them and play with them or um, you know uh, stretch them or or go and sew them again the problem is that if you don't let them cool then this bias is still kind of it's got some moisture in it perhaps and that's what stretches out as well so always let your pieces cool before you go on to the next step that's another big tip okay moving on to this so i have a little four patch here and you can see that i have got you know of course you want seams going in opposite directions in order for them to butt up in the center right but a nifty trick and uh, that i learned first you would set your seams is fanning the seams and this is a really nifty trick so some uh, tips or people who fan seams they say go to cut let me get my little purple thing they want you to cut the actual fabric to the either side of the seam can everybody see that if you you do a little slit here and you do a little slit here i have a problem with that because if you cut down too far you're going to cut right into your fabric you're going to cut through your horizontal stitching that goes here and then some people say, well, just open it up and take away these stitches in the middle. And I used to try to do that. They say, okay, just take your seam ripper and take away the stitches in the middle right here. Right? And that was really difficult for me until my friend Dawn Gale over at uh, Linderella's taught me one day what to do. She said, oh, just keep it folded. I said, what do you mean keep it folded? She goes, just keep it folded just like this and remove the two stitches that are right above right here. Let me come up to the camera so you can see. You're going to remove, and they're actually already coming out. Oh, let me get myself there. See, they're kind of coming out. It's the two stitches right above the horizontal line. And if I remove those two stitches, this like magical thing appears, which is like a little four patch, and it's called fanning your seams. And I would encourage you to try it because until you do it at home, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not in the camera. Oh, there we go. So I've removed the two little stitches. And once I do that, whoa, what happened there? I got like this little four patch. Can everybody see it? The little four patch in the middle. This is really a brilliant trick for pressing because what it does is once I get this pressed, it makes a totally flat center. And this is not so much for a four patch, but when you have 
a pinwheel and you've got half square triangles and everything coming to the center if you fan your seams like that you will get a totally flat 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 center like that and no bulk in the middle at all um, and that is perfect so um, again leave your comments in the, in the comment section let me know if you have any tips and tricks for pressing so other people can can um, can uh, view those and we can share all our tips and tricks we'll go back to the cactus cam really quickly and see what's going on out there oh it must be too hot oh dear it must be very hot out there for everybody there goes the window that's beautiful a nice little breeze on happy fourth of july weekend for everybody in the cactus cam so to let's go to what our question of the week is so um, let me just check comments though let's some comments. comments let's see Jennifer. i have a black and decker iron that's listed longer than uh, what it was, i couldn't read that carl you went too fast okay it's jen I have a black and decker iron that's la lasted longer, longer than one. Yes, that is that is the funny thing. You know, um, that black and decker iron that I showed you, um, I abused that, and I'm not even sure what my mother did with it. I mean, I found it in way deep in in a cupboard, um, and I'm sure it's got to be 20 years old, and it just lasts and lasts and lasts. So yeah, great starch tip from Julie. Thank you, Julie. Yes. Yeah, I learned that from Harriet a long time ago. And if you don't know about Harriet Hargrave, I would, um, I would suggest you go look up her name. She is uh, one of maybe five ladies that started the Great Quilting Revival in the uh, late 70s, uh, maybe early 70s. Um, and she is wonderful. And um, her books on machine quilting as well as machine applique are um, actually, they're like, you know, the textbooks that you need in your library. Harriet Hargrave is her name. Uh, Nedra, great tip. I've not heard that. Thank you, Nedra. That is great to know. And let's see. Hello, I'm waving to, to Robert. He's our friend from Palm Springs. Hello, Robert. Terry says, great tips. Thank you, you guys. Yeah, and go ahead and add your tips into the comments as well. We want everybody to share here, and um, I love hearing all these things. So. Thank you, Teddy. Great tips from my favorite teacher. Thank you, Teddy. That's very nice of you to say. So we'll um, go on. Oh, Nancy, if you snip the two stitches, won't the piece ravel out? No, it doesn't. Amazingly. You just have to make sure if you keep it folded, like I said, and you take away just those two or three stitches. Now, don't backstitch. That's the other thing I forgot to mention is don't backstitch because that just makes your life um, really troublesome. If you just stitch through and you've got those two stitches, they almost remove themselves when you start to undo them. But you just seam rip those two stitches. And if you don't get that little four patch appearing, it means that you might have a stitch still in there. So, you know, fold it back as if it came out of the machine, refold it, and then just take away that one stitch. It works every time like a dream, I'm telling you. Candy says, I too really appreciate the starch tip. Thank you. Yeah. It's, Harriet is full of tips like that. They're just, uh, she's a wonderful, wonderful quilter and lady. Um, and uh, I don't think she teaches anymore, but look up her name, Harriet Hargrave. So this week's question for the Colorworks gift card is, so make sure you comment below, what is your favorite brand of iron? Even if you don't have a favorite brand, just go ahead and comment below. Everybody gets put into the bucket to uh, win a chance to win the $10 Colorworks gift card. Um, and so I think, let's see, we have anything else? Sharon, I'm looking at, we have, oh, Carl's saying, hold on. He's being very quiet. He's very shy. He won't say anything. Elaine, Dr. Elaine, hello. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon says, great tips. I, I see I don't take enough time pressing. Yes, pressing makes for per, per, uh, perfect piecing. And it's one of the things that I learned, again, from my good friend Dawn, who used to do samples for me at Linderella's. She said there were three things that make for uh, blocks to go off. One is cutting, second is piecing, uh, which is your quarter inch seam, and the third is pressing. And all three of those combined can really throw off a block. So let me show you what we're going to do for next week. So next week, we're going to be back on our Fab Friday at 10 a.m. Palm Springs time or 1 p.m. Eastern time. And next week, I'm going to show you 
how to make, let me get it right there for the camera, we're going to make slash and sew pillows out of two half yards. So this is going to be next week's um, little demo tutorial in our Fab Friday live stream. Again, I thank you all so much for showing up today. Um, happy, happy 4th of July, everybody. Have a great weekend. Uh, stay safe. Stay sane. Um, enjoy your family. Enjoy friends. Thank you so much for showing up today. We really appreciate it. Carl and I wish you happy, happy, colorous thoughts this weekend. Happy quilting. Thank you so much. Happy 4th, everybody. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.